the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I'm not in charge of naming the seasons of the church year or the particular Sundays. You probably are surprised to hear that. Uh, I probably wouldn't have picked Christ the King Sunday uh, in 2015 in the United States in the Episcopal Church uh, that exists because of our desire to sort of get away from a monarchy. Uh, but how do we come to understand what that means for us? Uh, that's the work for today. And, and I think we also have, from the other direction, uh, God's resistance to having God's people served by a king. Uh, we start with that last uh, uh, words of King David, uh, but remember, God told his people, you don't need a king. <coughs> remember, he said, you don't need a king, you're doing just fine. Uh, I will govern you, we'll have these judges that help you when you get a little astray, and they'll help I'll let you know what I would, would, would like you to be doing. Uh, but as soon as you get a king, you're going to have to pay for a palace. Uh, your, your sons are all going to serve in the army. Uh, your women will find some purposes around the palace. Uh, and, and all of your hard-earned money will go to, to pay for all of the royal court. Do you really want that? But they said, well, look at that country. They've got a great king. And it, it looks pretty shiny, the palace. We want what they've got. And so God works with God's people and says, okay, so you pick your king. And so they pick Saul, who's the, you know, even bigger than me, it's hard to believe, but uh, he's an enormous physical specimen and he fails miserably and then they call this ruddy boy David who serves as a faithful king but an imperfect king, uh, reminding us that uh, we are incredibly susceptible to this world. So what do we make of Christ the king? Where is Christ's domain? What does it mean to be followers of Christ the king? And I think I'll start by going back to the gospel. The gospel today, uh, we kind of fast forwarded through uh, uh, Jesus as he's uh, at the end of his ministry preparing to go to Jerusalem. And we're already there. He's been arrested. Uh, and he's in front of Pontius Pilate. One thing I will say is I think in scripture Pontius Pilate gets off probably easier than anybody. I think Partly, uh, as they wrote the Gospels, they were far more afraid of Rome than they were uh, of, of, of their Jewish counterparts. Uh, I also think that we don't quite understand fully what's going on with Pontius Pilate. Uh, Pilate uh, had some political aspirations, they believe. They don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, but he'd uh, kind of been put in this dinky job in charge of these uh, kind of small potatoes in the whole idea of the, 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 the Roman Empire, uh, but it was supposed to be a three-year term. He was the prefect uh, for Judea and a few other areas, Samaria, uh, but I think he thought, saw this as kind of a stepping uh, stone to, 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 bigger, to, to bigger things, but he kept getting in trouble. You know, Rome actually called him in, Rome of all people, called him in uh, and said, you know what, uh, you all, you are being way uh, too violent uh, and disrespectful of the people that you govern. You know, they are uh, reacting against you. Uh, so he, he was actually uh, uh, punished, sent back, and he served 10 years and was supposed to be a three-year term uh, and, and, and sort of never quite got above that plateau. Uh, and so he's trying not to get on Tiberius' bad side any further than he already is. Uh, you can remember uh, some of the readings in Luke about uh, that he, he mixed uh, uh, Galilean blood with sacrifices in the temple to sort of uh, uh, undermine uh, the, and, and, and sort of show the, the Jews exactly who's in charge. Uh, so he's not a nice guy, even though we kind of have him as a benevolent uh, person stuck in the middle in our story. Uh, but Pi Pilate's there, and he is the judge, and Jesus is on trial. But very quickly, Jesus realizes the Pontius Pilate really does have no power for two reasons. One, because he has no power, because he's kind of wedged between Tiberius uh, and the Jewish people, and he's stuck in between. And also because Jesus knows this isn't about Jesus. This is about God and the power of God. And with God, anything is possible. And if God didn't want Jesus to be here in this moment, he wouldn't be. So as Pilate calls Jesus... Uh, to the stand or to the judicial bench, Jesus starts to turn the conversation around. Who do you hear that I am? Who do people say that I am? Why do you call me king? What does it mean to be king? Then he tells them, if I was of this kingdom, 
If I was king of this kingdom, my soldiers would be lined up and you wouldn't have this opportunity to put me on trial. But as it is, my kingdom is beyond your understanding. So you sit here with limited amounts of power, uh, preserving yourself, essentially. Well, I speak of a kingdom that's beyond all of that. And I invite us to keep that in mind as we think about who we are and what our responsibility is. And the first thing I started to think about, uh, and over the course of the week, uh, we've, we've been lambasting one another over our different global political views. Uh, and certainly I have my opinions, and I uh, you know, uh, came to the realization that not everybody thinks exactly like me, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, and I could go on about how uh, being uh, servants to the kingdom of God calls us to act in this particular way, but that's sort of beyond what we, we actually get to decide on a daily basis. But what we do get to decide is how we live our own lives. What we do in our own lives is something that we can determine uh, and is something that can be built up and, and can actually expand the kingdom of God. So I decided I'd focus more on that. And I was reminded of a story uh, that I'd heard of, a, of an old man. He, he, he looked like he must have been a homeless man. He was poorly dressed. Uh, he looked like he hadn't bathed in a long time. And he wasn't begging for money, but he was standing on the side of the road. And several people walked by. Uh, and then some benevolent uh, woman walks up and gives him $20. And she, she says, uh, ma'am, I, I, I didn't ask for your money, but thank you. I, I don't need, need money. I'm a king, actually. Uh, and the woman says, you you look like a homeless man. You don't look like a king. And he says, well, I am a king. And so the, the woman entertains him a little bit and says, okay, so where's your, where's your kingdom? And he says, well, uh, my kingdom is as vast as, as, as I want it to be. It's as vast as I make it. The roads travel as far as I will take them. So entertains it. So is this in Europe? Is this in a southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere? Uh, and finally he tells her, he says, I am the king of my kingdom and my heart is my kingdom, and it expands as far as I allow it. And I have as much dominion over it as I claim. She sort of thought about it and said, you know what, there's some truth there. So that's what I invite us to think about as we entertain Christ the King Sunday. We've heard week after week about the person of Jesus, and I hope that as you've heard the gospel week after week, you've integrated that into who it is that drew you here to sit in the pew today. Who is it that you call your Lord and Savior? What is the person of Jesus that's been revealed to you over the course of the last year? And how do you serve? How do you open up your heart as the kingdom of God? I can tell you I've seen a glimpse of it. Over the last nine days, and I am, I am wiped out. I, I, and I woke up with a sore throat this morning because there's been so much ministry going on. I had dinner with the new rabbi uh, yesterday who worships in our, in our, our church. And uh, he was giving me a hard time because he had to actually uh, rent out the community center for their, their Friday dinner because there was so much going on here. Uh, there wasn't room uh, between bread baking and the Borkstrom's gathering up a, a crew of many to, to bake well over 700 loaves uh, for us to give away. Uh, I show up for the race and... Uh, I noticed a couple hours later that I see uh, the kitchen with pots and pans clanging as they're making breakfast sandwiches to take to the homeless shelter, as I see 185 people sign up to run a race uh, to make sure that no children in this county uh, go without preschool education. Uh, as I think back over the course of the week and all of our preschool teachers who've, who've uh, had their children put on these absolutely incredible Thanksgiving programs. Uh, to just being stupefied by uh, the wisdom and faith of our elementary children during the Thanksgiving service uh, to last weekend as uh, this congregation reached out in love and care for one of our uh, beloved uh, who we, 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 we send to those celestial shores and we support her family uh, as, as we uh, laid Abby to rest last weekend. Uh, and then we showed up that night halfway across the county to a service uh, where our entire choir was there in, uh, in, in full form uh, as we worshipped with, uh, with traditions well outside our own for a common good to try to feed uh, six to eight hundred uh, people in Fauquier County this Thanksgiving. Uh, and I think of all the work that's taking place, uh, and I know we have our differences, I know we have our different ideas of, of who Jesus is, uh, but when we allow Jesus to be the king of our hearts, to rule that tiny bit of space, we can transform lives. We have, in the course of the last two weeks, I've never been prouder of a faith community uh, than what I've seen day in and day out uh, and I ask us to focus on that. Where is God calling us to expand our heart, to set out in new paths, to build that kingdom of God? 
to claim that the person that drew us here, Christ our Lord, is our Savior, our King, and the ruler of our hearts. Just see where it takes us. So far, it's been pretty amazing. Amen.